Remember when I told you that the Squadron 69 in Israel of the Israeli Air Force would not take Benjamin Netanyahu to Italy on the flight there? And he had to find another way to get to Italy for this meeting? Well, um, somebody responded to me on Rumble and sent me this article from the Jewish press and it pretty much tells you what's been going on with this trip to Italy and why it was basically um, the protesters were protesting against him going. So you've got to hear what's going on there because this is really interesting. Now I personally believe that when the covenant with many is made that that actually has to do with allowing the Jews to build the third temple on Holy Mount Moriah and it's going to include the whether it's the land lease or what not going on with that and so I don't believe that this or any other you know paper that's signed I don't believe is it I believe that that has to do with actually building the third temple on Holy Mount Moriah. But this report says, and this was written by David Israel, and it was March 14th, so it was yesterday, Netanyahu reaped stunning economic benefits in weekend visit to Europe. You're going to fall off your chair, reporter Yoshi Baum tweeted Monday night and continued, it looks like the prophet's vision of the end times, but these are the facts. Israel is becoming a superpower. So what did I tell you? I told you they were going to do all of these things to elevate themselves, to make themselves with the supreme world court, with the king at the helm, to be the monarchy, to be the king basically of the world and set up the one world religion right there in Jerusalem, that's apostate. But he goes on to say, our tiny country is becoming an extremely dominant and significant player vis-a-vis -vis Europe in a way that completely changes the rules of the game in the Middle East, including vis-a-vis -vis the Palestinian Authority. This is unbelievable. Netanyahu's visit to Italy this past weekend was intended to conclude a major deal for a $9 billion natural gas pipeline to be carried out by an American company with U.S. funding. Also in Berlin later this week, Netanyahu is reportedly going to sign a $3 billion arms sale to Germany. Okay, so all of the Holocaust victims are rolling over in their graves, I'm sure. The deal was announced in September, but was delayed because of the elections. Also, when Netanyahu hops to London next weekend, huh, interesting timing, going to London, going to meet with the king, he is expected to seal another huge arms deal. Needless to say, he had my attention. Baum references the East Med Pipeline, a planned offshore onshore natural gas pipeline directly connecting the energy resources off the shore of Israel to mainland Greece and from there to Europe. The initiative is conducted by the Gas Forum of the Eastern Mediterranean Basin, which was established by Israel, Italy, Greece, Cyprus, Jordan, Egypt, France, and the Palestinian Authority. The U.S., European Union, and Emirates have observer status in the forum. 
The East Med Initiative was signed in Israel in 2019 under the auspices of Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, but the change of governments in Israel and later the war in Ukraine led the Biden administration to announce at the beginning of 2022 that it was withdrawing its support from the initiative due to environmental considerations. So we've got Joe Biden trying to destroy all of these pipelines and make sure they're not used. What was that, one might have asked? The pipeline posed risk to some rare breed of crustacean? A few weeks after Biden's brilliant move, Russia invaded Ukraine and proceeded to use its gas supply as leverage against Europe, which, by the way, Trump had warned about. So is that what started this war? And is that what's really going on? And Joe Biden, you know, fighting against this pipeline? So let's see. Trump had warned about this and Europe's energy supply was in crisis and the new German Chancellor Olaf Scholz made a pilgrimage to Israel only days after taking office to reach an agreement on the supply of energy from Israel to Europe. Scholz wanted to run the pipeline through Turkey and the Lapid government agreed and sent President Isaac Herzog and later Defense Minister Benny Gantz to seal the deal with President Erdogan. This move did not go down well with Turkey's nemesis in the region, Greece and Cyprus, which is why President Nikos Christodoulidis of Cyprus rushed to meet with Netanyahu immediately following the November 1st election and before he took over as Prime Minister to sign a deal that keeps Cyprus and Greece in the picture. Netanyahu consequently informed the Turks that Israel would consider letting them back into the deal only after they get rid of the Hamas presence in their country. It's something Gantz was also trying to achieve but did not accomplish it. At this point, after the series of devastating earthquakes Turkey has endured recently, it's doubtful whether they are ready at this juncture to join the project. Baum describes the uh, magnitude of the deal, and I must admit it is astonishing. It says, one, according to estimates, the pipeline should deliver more than 5 billion euros worth of Israeli natural gas annually to Europe over the next 15 years. So that gives them a whole lot of control over things with Europe. Setting it up for the new monarchy that Israel's going to put in place and everything I just said in all of my last videos about them putting a king on that throne. According to Professor Etan Shashinsky, the Sir Isaac Wolfson Professor of Public Finance at Hebrew University, the annual benefits that will go to the State of Israel's wealth fund from the deal should be around 60%, meaning an annual contribution to the fund of at least 3 billion euros, which is $3.21 billion. Three, Europe will do anything to obtain Israel's natural gas. Judging by the current negotiations with Germany, Berlin is prepared to completely change course regarding the lavish aid it provides to the Palestinian Authority and anti-Israel charity organizations or associations. Four, Israeli natural gas reach all of Europe including Norway, which is a major supplier of oil, gas, and electricity. Five, in addition to the gas pipeline, additional pipelines will be built along the same route to transfer oil, electricity, and internet fiber optic cable. These should connect to the pan-European system. Six, as a result, Israel is becoming a significant player in Europe which now needs Israel more than the other way around. 
Baum suggests that like Turkey and Germany, every European action regarding the Israeli PA conflict, every United Nations vote will be examined from now on in light of the new circumstances. In other words, help the PA construct illegal construction in Area C or get heat this winter. Okay, I admit some of the above looks more like wishful thinking than the biblical prophetic vision of the end times. Still, Israel could certainly use the wealth fund to improve education, transportation, and all the other vital components of modern society. They plan to elevate themselves to be the one world religion there in Jerusalem and bring all of these religions together into one. And to have a king sitting on that throne, reestablishing the Davidic dynasty by an earthly man who's got a military background, which King Charles III has been in, of course, the British Royal Navy. So he's got a huge military background. And, of course, Britain used to have the top navy in the world, the Royal Navy. So, this is, um, you know, a huge naval background and a huge military background of the king. But one final note, if you've been following the proceedings of M.K. Simka Rothman's Constitution, Law and Justice Committee, you noticed a permanent feature there. M.K. Kareen El-Harar Yish Atid for more than two weeks, she has been heckling the chairman, interrupting speakers and drenching every meeting with the inane statements without once proposing even a shred of an alternative to any part of the judicial reform legislation. Chairman Rothman has been reluctant to send her out of the committee room after three warnings, as he has done her fellow cantankerous opposition MKs because El Harar is disabled and when she is expelled she reaps fantastic camera attention as she slowly maneuvers her wheelchair to the exit. Then it says back when El Harar served as Minister of National Infrastructures, Energy and Water Resources she decided to stop the search for new underwater energy for a year. According to Baum's report, her decision delivered the message to investors that Israel wants out of the drilling business and chase them off the pipeline project. As a result, Israel missed out on the opportunity to hit the European market just as the Russians were beginning to choke it and it also formed it to sell natural gas to Egypt at a lower cost. As per the two countries agreement on natural gas that is not piped, Egypt then turned around and sold the same cheaper gas at market value to the freezing Europeans. This in addition to interim Prime Minister Yair Lapid's unratified gas exploitation contract that relinquished Israeli territory to the Lebanese combined to cost Israel billions in potential income. Way to go, Yish Atid. So the whole thing was about these pipelines and establishing this one big pipeline to Europe and continuing to build other pipelines along with it to put into Israel's wealth fund. And they're going to the UK, Benjamin Netanyahu, to speak to the king. All of this is pretty ironic timing, don't you think? In everything I said about that they wanted to establish their own righteousness and not the righteousness that comes from God you know, they're not acknowledging Jesus is the Mashiach, the Messiah. They're trying to establish themselves and, you know, all the Gentiles will be under their feet. This is how they view Gentiles. 
And although it's really sad, and I, I just hate that fact that they don't know who's a Jew and who's not a Jew. You know, they really don't. All of the migrations and things that have happened, there's lots of Jews that are probably hidden that they think are Gentiles, so they're treating them that way, lesser than themselves. But under God, we are all created equal. And don't ever forget that. And as a woman, don't ever forget that. And this just shows what's really going on behind the scenes. It shows why Israeli Squadron 69 was protesting this trip and would not fly Benjamin Netanyahu to Italy. There was a lot more going on behind the scenes. I do not believe that this is um, anything related to the agreement that is in Daniel's prophecy. So, as I said, I believe that is going to involve for them to build the third temple up there and make a wheeling deal with the devil, with the king. So, in the next week or so, we'll see what happens when Netanyahu visits the king in the UK, in England, in London. So, I just wanted to let you know about this story and uh, that there was a reason why the squadron was protesting. And it goes a whole lot deeper than anything that was ever said. It's all laid out in this wonderful article sent to me and sent to me by the person that answered on my Rumble account. So, thank you for listening. Uh, this is from the Jewish Press and written by David Israel. So now we know what's really going on and how Israel has a wealth fund that they're creating to gain wealth through all of this pipeline action. At the same time, we've got a leader that's making sure that we do not have our pipelines working. So, you know, with all the stuff that's going on deliberately with the banks and all of that, you know, let's just keep our eye on the sky keep watching for the Lord's return and keep wise and don't be deceived by people who have a dream every other minute about the rapture or people that post a cartoon trying to say that that has something to do with the rapture or you know they see numbers on clocks or somebody's you know um, I saw the same number on my clock that I happened to see on a you know bumper sticker you know, that's just, it's not biblical prophecy at all. So you really cannot go by these crazy things. The only thing you can go by is the Word of God and the Scriptures. And what does Daniel's prophecy have to deal with? It's not dealing with America. It's dealing with Israel. And that whole system being reconstituted in the last days when God's judgment's going to be poured out and God brings it to an end. said himself played the harlot against him is the scarlet harlot it says that she was clothed in scarlet and purple. This goes back way before Catholicism so you know Daniel was not talking about Rome he was not talking about Anybody other than the restoration of his monarchy because he is from the tribe of Judah, the royal line. And that royal line is going to be reestablished before Jesus comes. And he's going to put an end to the earthly kingdoms of this world. So now we know what was really going on on that trip to Italy and how it's involving you know, controlling Europe basically through the gas pipeline. And the U.S. is involved in all of that. Instead of giving us our own pipelines, guess where it's going to is Israel. All of that is involved together. So now we know what's really happening and how they're gaining power and how it's going to wind up in the last days and just like the article said, pretty crazy, huh? So I will talk to you later. Shalom.